What's up everyone? Today we are putting the rings on our pistons and hopefully putting the pistons back into the engine. So in the last video we saw we were able to lap the valves in the head. Right now actually the head is sitting behind me making sure the compression is good. So uh, you guys have probably already seen it. Hopefully it was good. And now I'm moving on to putting the rings on our pistons. These are the pistons that we got used because I messed up putting mine on. So you can see here these are Pistons out of a good running V16. Everything's already on it, good to go. Comes with the matching caps, everything you need. So, got that laid out here, and now I'm gonna show you. Got our piston ring installer tool. I'm gonna go ahead, put them all on here. I'll show you which way to clock it, and then how we're gonna put it into the block with our new bearings. All right, hopefully you don't hear the noise in the background. My dad's doing some vacuuming. But, uh, so what we got here is our rings in front of us. They come in a bag. It's labeled everything where it needs to go. Top ring, the second ring, so starting top down, top, second, oil. So for those, you've got two, see this comes with eight of these rings because you have one on top of this ring and one under it that goes in the bottom. And we're going to start by putting, we'll do the one in the middle first, the middle, which is our second groove. We're gonna go in from the top Taking our piston ring installer tool. My bag's already open because I've already uh, checked these in the block for our clearance. So I'm just gonna take a look at it, second groove. Because this one does have a tapered edge. Usually this will stay on it, like which way's up and down, but this one doesn't. So you just gotta make sure you take a look, see if there is a difference in your rings. These so you want the tapered one to be facing down, because that's what it's using to kind of push the oil down. Set the ends of it in like that. And you want to be very gentle with this process. You don't want to wind up making the gap bigger and you don't want to break your rings, so. And open it just enough to get over. There we go. Yeah. Woo. Kind of nerve wracking because if I break these, I just I don't want to have to order more. You know what I mean? Now that that one's on, go to the top one. Side. For now, it doesn't matter which way the opening is because we're gonna spin it around. Whoops. We're gonna spin it around and put them in the specific way before it actually goes into the block. Whew. Scary. I just popped off the tool there. go. Now it's on. It's in the groove. Let it go. And sweet. Top one's on. Now the bottom ones we'll put in from the bottom. Uh, grab an oil groove one. Make sure you only grab one. There is eight of them in there. They're very thin. One from the bottom. Up here, up the side. Do, do, do. And it's in. All right. So those ones just slide on by hand. I'm gonna show you the oil groove. These just have a little opening in it. Some of these are actually normally all held in by like a wire. So these ones, I guess not on the B16. Looking at it, it appears to be the same top to bottom. They both are the same, eh? Yep, 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 all right. So again, slide it in from the bottom. Sliding on and in pretty well. Trying to make sure that it's nice and even. One side is in, the other side's not. So that's not, that's not great. Let's try and spin it around there. That needs to get in the groove as well. There we go, I think that's in. Yeah, you just need to move things back and forth, make sure that this actually is in and flush all the way around. These ones will stick out more than the bottom ones. All right, but that's pretty much in there. All right, so now we're just gonna do our bottom one. You just take another one of the oil grooves, make sure you have one. Slide that on with your hands, 
same process. So the bottom ones do by hand, the top two, you need a ring uh, installer to do that. You could probably try and do it with your hands, but those are a lot thicker. It needs a lot more pressure, so you'll probably break one if you do that by hand. All right, that down till it reaches the groove. Try and do it evenly, because if you don't, you could break it. And there, it just pops. Pops right in, make sure it's flush all around. Sweet. There you go. We have all the rings on one of our pistons. I'm just going to repeat that off camera for the next three. And after that, we'll show you which way to orient the openings in each ring. And then all that will be left is compressing this and putting it in the block. Finished putting the rings on to all of our pistons. These are all nice, fully loaded, ready to go. We're going to be dropping that into the block after we orientate our pistons, the rings, to the correct location. So just gonna show you now that we've got our rings on. I'm gonna show you which way to orient your ring gaps. I'll probably put up on the screen here our screenshot of what, what I'm using to find out where to put them. And I'll show you here. So holding my piston like this with the arrow pointed, towards me. The main keys to take away here is no ring gaps in line with your um, wrist pin and nothing in line with the thrust surfaces here on the sides. And what we're doing is the top ring is going to be 90 degrees, well, not 90 degrees, top ring is going to be uh, 45 degrees off from here. So between this 90 and here, you're going to set that gap there. As you can see, that's where our top ring gap is. The second one is going to be 90 degrees from that. So the same thing, but in this corner, I'll show you here, spinning, spinning, spinning. There's our, it's kind of hard to see on this one right here. Let me try and get that to focus. There you go. So there's our second ring gap right there, which basically you can follow the line from, uh, hmm, like just before the edge of this. So you can follow this line here up and then you want the center of your gap here. This actually moved a little bit. You want the center of that gap to be just, just past it. So where my finger is there, you want that to go up to the center of it, which goes up to here just before this. And that will be 45 degrees between here, 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 see, see how that works? Bam, there you go. Now bringing it back, arrow pointing towards yourself, the bottom ring gap, so the center spacer here, and I've just been using a little, a little pick like this to move them. Uh, it's gonna be hard to show you. Right here is where that meets. So that's the gap in the center spacer, and the 45 just before this portion here. And on this side of the piston, at least, see there's this little edge, this little ridge here. So where that ridge here is where you're lining it up with. And that ridge goes just before this. And that's where you want that to be. And then you're going to have the bottom one 15 degrees left, top one 15 degrees right. It doesn't really matter which one it is, but as long as they are offset about 15 degrees. And that's going to be pretty much halfway between the wrist pin and the middle where your 45 was. So that's what I've done here. Eyeballed the bottom one is about halfway between where these two are. And then our top gap, which is, whoop, get it to focus. Top gap right there between the two is halfway between here and here. So the middle of the thrust surface to where your uh, middle spacer was. So halfway between this and this is right there. And that's the way you're going to orient all of your piston rings and make sure they are in line. It's, it's an approximation. Uh, it doesn't have to be like dead on where it is, but in pretty close to that zone of being not in line with these corners. So 45, 45, 45, just off, just off. You know, that's the gist of it. And then you want it to be like that when you compress your rings with your tool and put it into your block.
All right, so it's time to start the process of installing the pistons. Got the piston ring compressor here and went ahead, grab another one of these cloths. Make sure you clean that out nice and clean. Pistons are over here in the box. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is lube the rings with oil before they go in. And I'm gonna give this another little clean just to make sure there's nothing in there that can scratch it or whatever. Really blow it out with air. And then I'll show you how we compress the rings and push the piston in. Got one of these old school ring compressors. I'll slide this on and then it just takes a small ratchet. Just grab the extension, put it in, and you can tighten it that way. Key part is to try not to move those rings. Grab your piston, and I'm just gonna drip some around. Just drip some oil around the outside here. So it doesn't go in fully dry. Quadruple check our rings where we want them to be. So I got it compressed there, basically did the same thing, just sat it down, tried to make sure it doesn't turn while it tightens. Now what we got to do is grab our main uh, bearings. We're going to put one in here before we go in and then on the other one. And these have a little nick in it, so you can't mess up the alignment. And we're going to put assembly lube on this before it goes in. Yeah, all right. Take your bearing, line it up with that groove. And then very gently put some more assembly lube here. I don't know where you want to say that, so I'll just Show you how we do it on the first one here, and then you can enjoy a nice time lapse of the rest. All right, there. The fun part is trying to align this while we push it through. And be very careful for this first. Let's see. Here, all right. So there, we heard something. So now we gotta align it. There we go. Now just hold this in place. Let me just pop this off. Yeah, you can see it was right there. All right, we're gonna check our alignment again. Firm. Nope. God damn it. This compressor sucks. So, yep. We're stuck at this point again. I'll get back to you when I get it in. But essentially that's what you do is this, tightening the rings. It should just push right in and then you can tighten it on the other side. Okay, so after struggling forever to get that in, as you saw me doing, I uh, basically just had another one of these laying around that got a little bit, I don't know, it was a bit better, a bit tighter. And I pushed it with one swift, one hand on the thing and the other just, just got to kind of go for it, but not too, too hard. And anyways, this will stop it from, it can't go like too far down. So just a nice even pressure and it just, it went through. I might uh, try and film another one there so you can actually see that in action. But now that it's in, pushed it down and this is around. And this is why you need to get your, at least the bearing that goes on the rod in first, because you won't really be able to reach in there. So now that that's there, let's do the process we did with our um, main cap. So assembly lube goes on there. Move that around, very, very nice. And we've got our cap here. Grab another bearing, same idea. We're gonna be putting lube on everything, everything you got. So, a bit of assembly lube. And then you can put your cap Put your cap on. I believe lettering faces the front. So both of these nubs are on the same side, which I guess in our case, lettering, you can read it. 
and you're facing the front from here. Uh, once I get all of them in here, I'll go over the actual torque specs. These get torqued in a certain step. It's like 14 and then, uh, why would I even tie? It's like 14 and then 30, but don't, don't take that number. I'm just throwing that out here. I'll give you the correct one in a second here once I look into my phone. But yeah, so now that you've got your piston in, got the cap on, we'll move on to the next one. Okay, I'm gonna try to show you who I'm pushing this one in this time. To push it till the skirt comes out. And that will hold it in line, that's like that, and then back, see? Just give her, and it goes in, woo, all right. So we are ready to get torque in. So the torque spec is 14 and then 30. I'm just gonna go in and loosely, lightly, don't use an impact for this, but I'm just tightening up the bolts. Snug. Rotate the crank. Tighten these. And these still aren't fully seated yet. Okay, now we're getting close. There's 14. See, on this giant breaker bar, it's really hard to see, but you feel that? Look. I'm able to flick it, you'll see the bar just barely. If you go too much, it will continue to move. So just where one finger does the thing, it won't really click, but it will move. All right, so we've torqued everything down to 30. I mean, I showed you how to do it. Numbers, you know how to use a torque wrench, so. Didn't really film the 30 part, but everything is down, torqued to 30 foot-pounds. And giving her some spins here. All seems to be well. Doesn't sound like anything is scratching. Takes a little bit of force to turn, but nothing crazy. I mean, brand new rings. So obviously they're gonna have some resistance against the wall. But there we go, that's there. Next thing we're gonna do is put our oil pump on here. We're gonna put some assembly lube and oil in this. Put our um, pickup tube, our plate, and then our oil pan. And this will be finito. And then we can uh, put our head on once we get those bolts in. That seems pretty good to me. Oh yeah, baby. All right, so now that our pistons are installed, I finally feel like we can put on our oil pump. We got our aftermarket oil pump. It's supposed to be 20% larger oil capacity, oil pressure, whatever. It's to... Here it is, nice, beautiful oil pump. Got the gasket, it goes there. I'm gonna lubricate that with a little bit of oil first. Grab the right stuff, gasket maker. And go to town, you know. A little bit of assembly lube, just like when we did our rear main seal. So we're gonna put a little bit here, up, up and down, slide it on, Looks smooth, flush. You can jam this in here with the dowels, dowel pins that'll hold it in place. We got our gasket on there. Make sure you don't forget your gasket when you're doing that. Cause you know, you're really awkward to realize that afterwards and have to go back again. When I say thread locker, I mean Permatex thread sealant. Permatex thread sealant. This is, cause I don't feel like this part of the engine needs any C's. It's not really exposed to the elements, but this will help stop the bolts from backing out better than anti C's does and it still also has a uh, anti-corrosion component. 
So once you got your oil pump on, now we can move on to replacing everything that's here. So this is why it was a smart idea to label everything. I got oil pickup, oil valley pan here, so I know those bolts go there. We've got our gasket to install for our pickup here. And then we've got this pan here. And we got our oil pan and gasket here. And before I put those on, I'm gonna throw some assembly lube in here. Just a little extra dazzle on everything. And I need to wipe this clean and then we will put on our components. And this you can't fuck up because it has a hole for your dipstick. So make sure that goes there. And slide that on. Grab the rest of your nuts and bolts on and in and good again. Awesome. Line it. Should have my head bolts by Friday and then I can go from put it all on. Right on. Yeah, and sure. Cross our fingers. Yeah. We got a fire and cart and fuel and boom boom. Boom boom. Fuel and boom boom. You heard it here first guys. If you want your car to run, you need fuel and boom boom. Quote from my dad. That goes there, that goes there. Are we sure? Yes we are. That's it. Put on our pin bolt. Our bottom end is assembled. That's gonna be finalized. Hopefully I didn't jump the gun and forget something. If not, you'll probably find out before I do. But yeah, I'm just gonna tighten these all down. Our bottom end is done. We just have our head bolts that are coming in the mail. I have to relap the valves in my head because it didn't work the first time, but I showed you how to do it, so. I'm, ugh, I'm not gonna do that video again, but I'm just gonna do that myself over here. This is done. We're getting our clutch and flywheel tomorrow, our head bolts by Friday. This whole engine's going back together. I think the next video is going to be putting on the clutch flywheel and maybe that'll be its own video. Maybe I'll also have the uh, prep, probably a video on putting that together, putting the transmission on the engine, getting it on the hoist and about to drop it in. And then once we actually put it in the car, I'm just going to do the bare minimum engine mounts, wiring harness, and then we're going to crank it and check for compression and all that and make sure it starts and runs before we actually throw everything in like axles and shift linkage and all that stuff because if we do have to work on it again fingers crossed knock on wood we shouldn't have to but um, I think it's going well everything seems to be rotating freely nicely it feels good it looks good if you don't think so let me know otherwise thanks for watching if you're keeping along keep keeping along I don't know what that means I'm just talking right now so uh yeah, really appreciate it. Lots more to come. I gotta stop saying that, because obviously I'm just, yeah. I hope you're as excited as I am to get this thing running. It's going to be very, very soon. Probably a couple videos from now. By the time you're watching this, I'm probably already driving this thing around if it all went well. So keep up with my Instagram, at Loopian Life, and on Facebook, I will have updates on there that will be more real time compared to my YouTube videos, which will be out every Saturday. Thank you very much. Have a great day. When you ask me to bring that guacamole to the party, I'll say no.